Tonight may be seeing both of them together in the same major league game for the very last time. Hi everybody, I'm Denny Trees along with Paul Splitarf at Arlington Stadium. What do you think, Split? Uh, is this going to be the last time we're going to see George and Noli together? Should we be waving goodbye tonight? I think there's a better than a 50-50 chance that this will be the last time you see him here in Arlington. But remember, the Rangers come to Kansas City next week, and Noli would be due to come up in the rotation and probably pitch in Kansas City next week. So maybe the Royals fans at least have at least one more chance after tonight. Nolan Ryan has not been pitching all that well of late at the age of 45, but you just never know when he's going to jump up and no hit you. He's already the, the oldest man ever to throw a no-no. He's done it twice twice at the beyond the ripe old age of 44. Well, he's on a little bit of a stretch right now where he's lost four straight, but his numbers across the board would indicate that he still has the potential to, to hold you down on any given night, and the Royals have to anticipate that this evening. The Royals are also going to have a number of young players in the lineup this evening. They're going to be facing him for either the first time or one of the first couple times, and you always wonder what effect that has on a young player when you go against a legend like Nolan Ryan. The Royals tonight will counter with Hippolito Pichardo, who just turned 23. It'll be Ryan against Pichardo when we come back with the starting lineups in just a moment. There was a threat of rain all day today in the Dallas area, but the skies have cleared. In fact, there's not a cloud in the sky. Temperatures are in the mid-80s. So this is a very comfortable night for baseball here in Arlington, Texas. The final of this three-game series, the Royals are still looking for their first win of this series against Texas and just their second win of the year down here in Arlington. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups. First of all, for the Royals, Greg Jeffries leads off. He'll be followed by the second baseman, Keith Miller. George Brett bats third. He's the designated hitter again this evening. Wally Joyner bats fourth. He'll be followed by Juan Samuel, the right fielder. Brent Main will work behind the plate this evening. He'll bat sixth. Jeff Conan is in left field. Kevin Kozlowski gets the start in center. He'll bat eighth. And David Howard is the Royals shortstop hitting ninth. And right-hander Ipolito Pichardo gets the start here this evening. For the Rangers, Brian Downing leads off. He's their designated hitter. Kevin Reimer has been a problem in this series. He plays left field. Ruben Sierra bats third. Juan Gonzalez plays center field. He'll bat fourth. Rafael Palmero is at first base again this evening. Dean Palmer bats sixth and plays third. Yvonne Rodriguez is behind the plate. Jeff Houston is the Ranger shortstop hitting eighth. And Jeff Fry, the rookie second baseman, bats ninth. And there's a look at Nolan Ryan. Just five and seven on the season, but his earned run average is under four runs per ball game. He's allowed just 109 hits and just over 125 innings pitched. Strikeouts to walks are still two to one. There's his traditional walk around the infield grass in front of home plate, checking to make sure that there are no holes there or no rocks. Defensively for the Rangers, the outfield has Reimer in left field. It's Gonzalez in center, Sierra out in right. Infield has Palmero and Fry on the right side. It's Houston and Palmer on the left side of the infield. Rodriguez does the catching and Nolan Ryan, tonight's starting pitcher. And with the call of tonight's game, here's Denny. Thank you, Split. Nolan is making his 756th career start here, tying Don Sutton for number two on the all-time list behind Cy Young, pitching to Greg Jeffries, a 301 hitter, and here we go. Fastball right down in there. Jeffries with eight home runs, 58 runs batted in to go along with that 301 average. Two for eight in the series so far, but a 375 hitter against Texas pitching on the season. They've had trouble with this former National Leaguer. A ball and a strike now. Mark Johnson is calling the balls and strikes tonight. Ken Kaiser works at first, Voltaggio at second, Larry McCoy at third. He's down on the count now, a ball and two strikes. Brian has been throwing the ball well recently, but making a lot of mistakes out over the plate. Left-handers always have to be aware of that straight changeup. He's got great motion on it, and it's very difficult to pick up the speed. Tried a breaking ball, left it high and away. Nolan Ryan in his 26th major league season. Only the third player ever to do that appear in 26 different big league seasons. He's beaten the Royals more than any other team 24 times. Jeffries dumps it into left center. Reimer started back on the ball now comes across and in to make the catch. Talk about the 26 seasons. I don't think I'd want to go through 26 spring trainings. He keeps himself in great shape. I don't think there are too many 45 year olds around split in any better shape than Nolan Ryan. Still does a lot of work on his ranch. 
He was not here for the opening game of this series. He was worried about the cattle on his ranch in Alvin, Texas, near Houston because of the hurricane. But came back yesterday. Pitching here to Keith Miller, batting 296, and he got him. Something to tell the grandchildren about. I survived being hit by Nolan Ryan. Keith Miller likes to handle the ball out over the plate, and he spins away from this ball perfectly. It's exactly the way you teach young hitters. You go after the ball, and as soon as you see it coming after you, you turn and roll into it. And that way, if it picks you off, it's got you on the back side of the arm or back side of the shoulder. You spin away from the ball and try to take it on the back. Nolan Ryan has not had a whole lot of success over the years against George Brett. George is a career 352 hitter against one of the best pitchers of all time. He has never homered against him. Nolan Ryan has struck out George 17 times over the years. George needing 38 hits now in the final 37 games to reach 3,000. Two for seven in this series so far. There goes Miller. Hard hit ball up the middle. Off the glove of Houston. The shortstop and on into center field. Keith Miller gets a stop sign at third, but the Royals have runners at the corner. And now a delayed charge for home by Miller. He had come to a dead stop at third base, then restarted the engine and raced home. Hustling play by Keith Miller, and it's not just the hustling play, it's the timing of the whole thing. Shortstop Jeff Houston was not the cover man, so it was, he was in his normal double play position. You see the second baseman has coverage at the bag. It goes off of Houston's glove into short center field. Miller pulls up at third base, and once he sees the, sees the soft toss coming into second base, he knows that he has a chance to score. Good throw may have gotten him at the plate, but that hustling play paid off for the Royals right there. How about that? Royals on the board first here. They lead 1-0, and Wally Joyner up. George Brett on the run, and he's a dead duck. Gunned down by Yvonne Rodriguez, who has thrown out almost 47% of the runners trying to steal against him this year. The best mark in the major leagues. This is not a high percentage play for the Royals. Brett does not have the kind of speed to just go out and flat steal a base, unless it is by surprise, and that's what he was trying to do there, the element of surprise. Trying to take advantage of the happening that just took place at the plate. Try to get himself in scoring position for Joyner, but it didn't pay off. Wally out in front of that one. Wally Joyner 0 for 8 in this series. Only 3 for 19 career against Nolan Ryan. And down on the count here, 0 and 2. Triggered late and fouled it off. George Brett is credited with his 49th run batted in. Scoring Miller all the way from first base on a single that hit the shortstop's glove. How about that? Again, the 0 2 to join it. That would be a scorer's option. He would not have to give the RBI in that situation because the base hit clearly got the base runner to third base. But in the scorer's opinion, Miller was able to score because of the way the Rangers handled the ball getting it back into the infield. So he moves up on the throw back in. You can give him the RBI. Joyner lofts it to left center. Juan Gonzalez racing over there. Makes the catch. The Royals are out in the first, but not before they score the game's first run on another base hit by Brett. Toby Hara is playing him as much as he is with the Rangers all but out of the race. Downing lifts it into shallow center field. That's the shortstop Howard taking charge makes the catch. Toby Hara says Brian Downing is one of the leaders on his ball club. He said we're trying to win as many games as we can and I think it gives us the best club when Downing's in the lineup. So he's going to keep playing it. Now here's Kevin Reimer. Plus Toby Hara is trying to keep his job. People can look to the future around here as far as 1993 and beyond as far as bringing in young players. But Toby Hara has not been given an insurance assurance that he'll be back next year. So he needs to win the ball game so that he can get another contract. And then you look at the youngsters. Kevin Reimer breaks his bat. A meat part of it. 
ended up on the mound beside Pichardo, but he's quickly got two outs in the ball game. Take another look at the pitch. Pichardo working him down and away, and that is his best area to go against the left-handed hitters. The sinking fastball. That was not a jam shot that broke the bat. It was a ball right off the end of the bat. Hippolyta wasn't sure whether to catch the ball or the bat. Well, he did the right thing. Let your second baseman handle the ball and make sure you stay out of the way of the bat because that jagged edge is really a lethal weapon. Working now to Ruben Sierra. Ball one. Sierra hitting 282, 14 home runs, 69 runs batted in. He was three for four in the opener of the series and, and hitless in three tries last night. Ruben in his last five games has batted 444, eight for 18, with seven ribbies in those five games. And he has always done damage against the Royals right from the first time they saw it. Sierra, the switch hitter, became his club's all-time leader in runs batted in before his 26th birthday. How many guys can say that? He ripped that one foul. Over the last five years, Joe Carter of the Toronto Blue Jays is the only player in the major leagues with more runs batted in than this guy. Should be no trouble for Conine and a quick inning for pitch career and he's already three pitches into this inning. A ball and two strikes to count on Juan Samuel who's two for eight in the series but hit the ball hard every time up last night. Samuel had a double a triple and two long outs. Just got a piece of that one. Brian has thrown him a couple of good breaking balls. Samuel is a good fastball hitter and he looks like he commands the outer half of the plate better than he does the inside. And he's got good gap power, especially right center field. He faced Ryan 40 times over in the National League. Only hit 225 against him. Got a fastball to hit there and fouled it back. And Nolan hasn't changed a whole lot since his days over in the National League with the Houston Astros. Time has probably passed pretty quickly for these two fellas, and they remember each other well. Good news for the Royals is that Ryan didn't strike out anybody in the first inning. When he gets a bunch early, he'll normally continue it. He threw that one over through that one about 50 feet before it bounced past his catcher, Pudge Rodriguez. He was trying to go for the strikeout breaking ball, and that's one where you just muscle up and try to get a little extra snap on it. That was more than buried. I think that actually hit on the edge of the grass out in front of the play. Now the 2 2 pitch to one. All the way. Nolan Ryan 0 and 4 in his last five starts lost eight to six to Cleveland last Friday night. He stayed around for just four to third innings in that game and gave up seven hits and seven runs and only struck out one in that game. There's his first strikeout tonight. He just buckled Samwell with the breaking ball. Showed him a little bit of everything but came back with the hook. Batting six, number 24. And it's a beauty. Catch your friend. One of our sponsors is Southwest Airlines, providing low, unrestricted fares to many exciting destinations. Southwest Airlines, it's just plain smart. Sam Wells sits down, and now it's Brent Main's turn. Main hitting 253, making just his second start since the his second start behind the plate, I should say, since the 9th of August. He did start two games at third base, and Quitted himself very well. Here's the 1 0 from Ryan. Stayed high. They appealed to the third base umpire, and that's Larry McCoy who said no swing. <laughs> Royals have already equaled their hit total from the first time and the only time they faced Ryan this year. That was on May the 21st. He gave up one hit in seven innings, left with a 5-1 to one lead. The Royals eventually won that game 7-5 to five on late three-run homers by Shumpert and McFarland. Ball shot foul. The difference in the two clubs between then and now, Denny, is that Texas bullpen has really come together. 
They've overhauled just about all parts of that except Jeff Russell and Kenny Rogers, the lefty and righty down there that they use in the late inning situations. But all the middle relief core down there now for the Rangers are new from in late May when the Royals jumped on the pen that night. Yeah, back then, if you could get into that pen, your chances were pretty good. Now the 2-2 pitch to Brent Main. Down and in. Nolan Ryan has pitched 323 innings against the Royals over the years and given 223 hits. 100 less hits than innings pitched. That ball lined to left. Over goes Reimer to make the catch. Reimer has had some defensive problems this year. And Toby Hara, their interim manager, would like to have his former teammate Rick Manning come over in spring training as a special outfield instructor. He said in all the years he and Manning played together, he never saw Rick drop a ball, and he would really like him to work with guys like Reimer and Gonzalez. Jeff Conine up there now hitting 269. Jeff was 0 for 4 last night and was really frustrated. He kept coming up with runners in scoring position and hitting harmless ground balls that couldn't even move the runners. He was mad enough to bite nails last night. There's that high riding fastball. One and one. He just swung late. In his trial this season, Jeff Conine has many times given us a big swing like this, trying to go for the downs and trying to pull the ball. But he's also shown the ability to cut down on a stroke a little bit when he's been down in the count or had two strikes on him. Let's see if he can do it here against Ryan. Popped it up. This one's going to reach the seats behind the screen. Two strikes to Conine. Kevin Kozlowski would be next if the Royals could keep this inning alive. Got him with the curveball. Two strikeouts in the inning for Ryan. Royals still lead one nothing. Giving you tonight's Southwest Airlines trivia question. If you know the correct answer, call 1 800 238 2099. The first person with that correct answer will win a free round trip ticket on Southwest Airlines from Kansas City to Chicago. And will also be entered in the Southwest Airlines sweepstakes, which will be a weekend for two in Las Vegas, courtesy of Southwest Airlines. There's a former Ranger, Curtis Wilkerson, has a ringside seat for this game tonight finale of a three game set Rangers have won the first two Juan Gonzalez leading off the second for Texas hitting 253 34 homers 88 runs batted in the 1 0 pitch to him from Hippolito Pichardo all the way Gonzalez has been held to just one hit in eight tries in this series but over his last dozen games he has seven homers and 14 runs batted in. Fans here have been getting on him a little bit about just going for home runs now. 15 of his last 32 hits have been home runs. He got two on Sunday to break their all time club record. He's got 34 now, the old record. 32 by Larry Parrish back in 87. off the end of the back. Denny fans down here are very anxious for some success. They had been told the last four or five years that the Rangers were on a developmental program. They had young players coming to the big leagues and they were going to be ready to win the West by this time. They had been hearing that year in and year out. The Bobby Valentine regime was here. It was in place. They had made very few changes on their coaching staff or in their front office and fans were expecting a winner and they were pretty well set up this year to where they were either going to win the West or Valentine was going to be gone. And even though Valentine is gone, they expect to see a lot of performance out of all their players, even if they're very young. 
Let's pause five seconds now for station identification. This is the Royals Television Network. This is WDAF-TV, Kansas City. Picharno and Maine finally get together on a sign of the payoff pitch. Ground to Jeffries at third. I think you're right about the fan split, but I'm sure that if Juan Gonzalez would cut down on his swing and start getting a bunch of singles, they'd say, that's not what you're getting paid for, Juan. We want you to hit home runs. And if I was a fan, I would want to see him run out ground balls like that quite a bit harder than what he did. He did pretty much the same thing here last night. Now here's that Southwest Airlines trivia question. Who was the Royals' first great base stealer taking at least 30 bases for eight years in a row? First great base dealer taking at least 30 stolen bases a year for eight years in a row. Rafael Palmero at the plate, not a great base dealer, but normally an excellent hitter, has cooled on to 254 this year. 15 homers, 64 runs batted in, 0 for 7 in the series. The ball on the strike to him now. Saw that shot of Curtis Wilkerson a moment ago. Curtis was one of the players traded to the Cubs for Rafael Palmero. Also pitcher Mitch Williams. Steve Wilson went in that deal. Miller throws him out. Two ground ball outs here in the second. And five straight retired by Pichardo. Always a key number for Pichardo when he is going to be on would be ground balls given up and two ground balls in this inning. He also had a ground ball back in the first. So three out of the five outs have been ground balls in the infield. The other one, a pop-up in the infield to go along with the fly ball to left. So Pichardo off to a good start here this evening. Dean Palmer up there now with 22 homers and 62 runs batted in on the year. He's three for six in the series. <laughs> Dean Palmer second to Cecil Fielder in strikeouts in the American League. Pichardo gets this one past him. Palmer has 16 more strikeouts than hits on the season. But he leads all American League third baseman in home runs. Pichardo thought he had him struck out with that pitch. The Royals have supported Hippolyto Pichardo very well this year, averaging five runs a game for him. They got 15. Their last home game. Backhanded nicely by Howard. Long throw across to get him. Six up and six down for the Rangers so far. One nothing Royals. This would be a big at bat for Kevin and a bat that he will never forget. His first matchup against Nolan Ryan. Naturally he'd like to have a good night against him whether it be this at bat or a little bit later in the ballgame. Hits it pretty well. Right center field. Ruben Sierra back looking up and it is gone. A home run for Kozlowski. One he'll never forget. Try to keep from smiling on your way around the bases if you can. That's only the ninth home run this season against Nolan Ryan. And it's Kevin Kozlowski's first in the major leagues. What a way to get it. Fastball out over the plate. He's got a short, quick stroke. Level through the hitting zone. And this ball is launched. This is close to 400 feet from home plate. It looked like it was just going to be a fly ball. Sierra then looked back, and it was gone. Kevin Kozlowski put a charge in that one, and you're right. He'll never forget that at bat. Whew. And now a strike to David Howard, hitting 266. Kozlowski still in a daze. Did I do that? First of all, he found out that Nolan Ryan is human. Something that a lot of other hitters never found out. Again, Kevin Kozlowski, a guy who was stuck in A ball in the minor leagues for six straight years, almost gave up the game. And here he is with a big home run off Nolan Ryan, giving the Royals a two to nothing lead. Can you imagine that thrill? Oh. Ball out away from Howard. One and two. David, since his return from Omaha, has been a 310 hitter. Curve ball missed. I 
think Kevin Kozlowski has made a big, big impression on Hal McRae in the time that he's been in the big leagues. David Howard not happy with that call by home plate umpire Mark Johnson, but Nolan Ryan has his third strikeout. They've all been called. Two of them on breaking balls, and this one on the fastball. I guess on the outside corner. David Howard not convinced at all, but Mark Johnson, the man behind the plate, was. And that's the first out in the inning. Third strike out of the ball game, as you mentioned. Nolan Ryan had a real hot streak here in midseason. Was 5-0 and oh in six starts from June 28th to July the 26th. That's a strike to Jeffries. He had been win winless in his first 11 starts this year. We told you 0 oh, and 4 his last five starts prior to tonight. I, mean, I think the plan at the start of the year was to have Nolan Ryan make starts on a fairly regular basis. I think the Rangers anticipated having to skip him from time to time. They did that last year. But I think they also anticipated him starting more so here at Arlington Stadium where they would draw the big crowds. But you look at his starts and they're pretty well even divided evenly divided between home and road. Just the way that it's worked out this year for Ryan and the Rangers. Two balls and a strike now to Jeffries, who fly to left to begin the ball game. He went around. Split you estimated Kozlowski's home run at 400 feet. You missed it by a foot. It was 401. My golf game's a lot like that, too. You know where I'm off, maybe a <laughs> yard or so, maybe a fairway or so, maybe a parking lot or so. And dumped into left in front of Reimer. Jeffries has his first hit tonight. The Royals have their third off Nolan Ryan. And Keith Miller coming up. Kozlowski's not the kind of guy you would anticipate hitting a ball 400 feet. Certainly not on a regular basis. But he is a little guy with a short, quick stroke. And if his timing happens to be right where he gets the bat head and makes contact right out in front of the plate on a good fastball, a pitcher will provide some of the power for him, and he has the chance to reach the depth. I don't think you look for it on a regular basis. Keith Miller was hit by a Nolan Ryan pitch his first time up. Into center field. Gonzalez got a late break. Comes on now to make the catch. On Labor Day, Monday, September 7th, Jolly Rancher presents the fireworks spectacular following a 7.05 Royals game against the Toronto Blue Jays. That's fireworks Monday night, September 7th at Royal Stadium. The Eastern Division leading Toronto Blue Jays will be in town to take on the Royals in that 7.05 start. So a big night on Labor Day, Monday night, September 7th. George Brett for president. Could have been elected in 1980, the year he had, hitting 390. George singled his first time up in this game. Now needs just one more hit to tie Sam Crawford, another Hall of Famer, for number 19 on the all-time list. There goes Jeffries. Rodriguez's throw in time to get him. So you'll have to wait one more inning to see George Brett try again. But the Royals score another run on Kozlowski's homer and lead it to of the Royals. Hippolito Pichardo has been perfect through the first two innings. Six up and six down against him, and now Yvonne Rodriguez, the 20-year-old Ranger catcher, stands in, hitting 272. One for seven in this series. Off the glove of Jeffries, it's a foul ball. That was close. It was the home plate umpire's call, and Mark Johnson left no doubt about it. It's his call because the ball has not gotten to third base and he is really in the best position to make that call because if you think of the third base umpire he's behind Jeffries and does not get a good shot of the ball because Jeffries is probably going to block him off. But Mark Johnson the home plate umpire has the entire play in front of him including ball going across the line before the man so it is the home plate umpire's call. Yvonne Rodriguez a free swinger he'll go after just about everything. He only walked five times all last season. 20 times this year, but you still have to work to walk him. Pichardo.
Gallardo at 23 years old, Rodriguez at 20. You think we're going to see this matchup for a few years to come? They're both going to be around for a while. Pichardo had his near-perfect game on July 21st, that one-hitter against the Red Sox at the age of 22. Nolan Ryan, who has thrown 12 one-hitters in his career, didn't get his first one. Until age 23, his first no-hitter came at 26, and that was against the Royals. Pichardo's control has been remarkable in his first big league season. Hippo has allowed only nine walks in his last seven starts. Here comes his 3-2 pitch. And again. Jeffries gets a room service hop that time and throws him out. That's four consecutive ground ball outs induced by Hippolyto Pichardo. And now Jeff Houston coming up. One of our sponsors is Long John Silver's. Well, right now you'll find the chicken and fish combo for just $1.99. Go fish at Long John Silver's. Houston has a six-game hitting streak going. The streak in which he has batted 420. It was two for five last night. We might be looking at the double play combination for the Rangers for the next few years. With Houston at shortstop, he's been a solid defensive player all season long. Contact hitter, he can do some things with the bat. He can get the ball down, advanced base runners. And Jeff Fry, their second baseman, is the classic overachiever. A guy that has never gotten off to a good start at any level in the minor leagues. And about the time the Rangers are starting to think about maybe releasing him, he gets hot and ends up moving up another level. Yeah, manager Toby Hara thinks that Julio Franco's future now is probably going to be in left field. He still wants to see him play center field, see how well he can patrol out there, but they're probably going to end up using Franco in left field in the future when he gets over his knee problems. And I don't think there's any question that Kevin Reimer is probably a DH. He's going to be an average at best outfielder. Of course, once Brian Downing is no longer here, Reimer would be the best candidate probably for that job. But the Rangers for many years have gone to offensive minded players even at their key defensive positions whether it be center field shortstop or even second base and it's about time that they threw some gloves out there on a regular basis and see if they can get things turned around. Now it's Houston's turn to be incredulous. He couldn't believe that called third strike. Mark Johnson does appear to have a fairly Nine, liberal strike one, zone tonight. Baseman, let's take another look at this one. Sinking fastball. See, the umpire always setting up on the inside part of the plate. He knows that he wants to be very good inside, and you hope that you can cover the outside corner as well. Now here's the young man we talked about, Jeff Fry, hitting 241, one homer, five runs battled in. He just turned, or will turn, 26 next week. Jeff Fry played at an NAIA school down here. Southeastern State in Durant, Oklahoma. Just 5'9", 165 pounder. He went two for three in last night's game. Rangers still looking for their first hit in this one against Pichardo. There's another guy for your all, all five foot nine inch team. Yeah. You can feel a pretty good one right now, you know? Get to looking around the league. Oh, I'm telling you. The guy who got the only hit in that one hitter by Pichardo back on the 21st of July is one of them. Jody Reed of the Red Sox. Just yeah, five. I think, gonna, I think you're going to find a lot of second baseman shortstop yeah. combinations. I don't know where you're going for power and who you're going to play at first base, but you got a lot of middle infielders and center fielders. That one went off the glove of David Howard, and the Rangers have their first hit. We've seen David come up with that ball before, but not this time. 
So many of the Rangers are going to that high leg kick. Tom Robson is their hitting instructor down here. And we see Sierra doing it. Of course, Franco does it. Gonzalez does it. And now Jeff Fry. And the idea is that it forces you to keep your hands back, keep your weight back. Ball just off the end of Howard's glove. I don't think he'd have been able to scramble to his feet to throw out Fry. But a nice effort. Fry leading away from first down with Brian Downing up there. Doesn't look like the Rangers are going to bring Steve Balboni back, although he's having a great year in the minor leagues. The American Association at Oklahoma City. Bonesy was just named the American Association Player of the Week for the third time this season. He had four home runs last week. He's leading the league down there with 28 home runs and 95 runs batted in despite missing about 20 ball games. But it looks like expansion may be Bonesy's re-entry to the big league split. I think he's got a couple things going for him. First of all, major league experience and expansion clubs will be looking for that. Second, the ability to leave the ball yard. Don't think you'd have to play him every day. Plus, he's got a nickname to go along with those other assets, and certainly that would be a plus for a club just starting out. I remember when the Los Angeles Angels first started. They picked a big minor league slugger with the same initials as speed, Steve Bilko. He never did a whole lot in the major leagues, but... He was a power threat, and of course, fans love the home run. Steve Balboni has very legitimate major league credentials. And it would seem like Colorado would be a perfect place for Bonesy because oh. he's a high fly ball hitter who has natural carry on the ball, a lot like Harmon Killebrew. Couldn't it hardly keep Killebrew from hitting the ball in the air, and if he got a lot of it, the ball just drifted and drifted and drifted. Balboni gives you a lot of that. 0-2 pitch to Downing up high. If you're just tuning in, the Royals lead 2-0. George Brett singled in the first run, and then the second one came on Kevin Kozlowski's first major league homer. Yeah, how unlike here are those two runs? Brett singling home a run from first, and Kozlowski homering off of Nolan Ryan, his first major league home run. Now, if you're going to have to score your runs around that kind of performance, how many runs do you figure on scoring in a night? Yeah, Kevin Kozlowski right there, the little guy. He's only 5'8". He hit one home run in his first four seasons of professional baseball. Well, and now he hits his first one in the major leagues off Nolan Ryan. Don't want to get too fine too early. Got to save a little bit. Got to put on the muscle slowly. One ball, two strikes here to Downing. Runner at first, two out in the Texas third. Not a huge crowd tonight, considering the participants, but a nice crowd. Shannon and Lee Cooper wanted us to say hi to Ralph, Lori, and Andy Cook back home. Mike Hamilton also among the fans here tonight. Mike from Overland Park made the trip down here. So hi to everybody back in OP. Through the hole into left field. Back to back hits for the Rangers here after two are out in the third. Then in the other night in Chicago, Pichardo was just cruising along against the White Sox. He had real good stuff, good sinking movement on his fastball. And they jumped on him very quickly. I think he panicked a little bit. Tried a little bit too hard, started overthrowing the ball, going to a four-seam fastball, trying to overpower people like he could do in the minor leagues. Now his next time out, first time that he's been in a jam in this ball game, the Rangers have runners on first and second. Two outs in the inning, so he needs to stay with that sinker, keep the ball down, try to get another ground ball. And this is the situation right here where the Rangers have really struggled since the All-Star break, hitting well under 200 with runners in scoring position. Reimer's only hit in this series so far was a 440-foot home run in the opener on Tuesday night off Kevin Apier, and it's the longest homer hit this year at Arlington Stadium. 444 feet, actually. Now, 
Klosky will get him next time up. <laughs> you think so? Sure. 401 may be his limit. He hit that ball, I think, just about as well as he can. And Guy Hansen now making the slow walk to the mound. Pichardo's thrown a number of pitches in this inning, so he'll take his time getting out there to give the youngster a little bit more time to catch his breath and just try to get him settled down. He doesn't want this inning getting away from him. He's got the two-run lead to work with right now. And he wants to be careful against Reimer. He got him on a sinking fastball down and away. Got a ground ball his last time up. Royals will be in Detroit tomorrow night. Rick Reed, two and five, will go against the veteran southpaw, Frank Tanana, 11 and eight. That was kind of a relaxed meeting. You saw Guy Hansen smiling. He wants to make sure that Pichardo is relaxing out there. Have a good time. Just throw the ball over the plate. Let your natural stuff take over. Get a ground ball. Get out of the inning. And let's just stay relaxed. Two balls, no strikes to Kevin Reimer. Two on, two out. He went after that 2-0 pitch and fouled it back. The Rangers, unlike the Royals, got off to a very good start this year. They won six of their first seven games, but just 57 and 65 since then. And most of their troubles have come at home. They have the lowest winning percentage in their home ballpark in the major league. Brent Maine asks for an appeal and gets a strike call from Larry McCoy. When Pichardo's got the ball down, he's got such good movement that a lot of times he'll get hitters to swing at balls out of the strike zone on the fastballs, not necessarily the slider or a split finger pitch. Not many pitchers have that kind of movement on their fastball that they get guys to chase that one. Driven to right center field, Kozlowski going back at the warning track, makes the catch. The Rangers strand two in the third, Royals still lead 2-0. Hope you'll be with us for our next TV game along the Royals Network. It's tomorrow night at 6.30 Central Time from Tiger Stadium. Royals against Sparky Anderson's Detroit Tigers. Got six more innings in tonight's TV game. Brett will lead off the fourth. He singled off the shortstop's glove his first time up and drove in Keith Miller all the way from first base. So George won for one tonight, but goes after the first pitch. Out behind second base. That's Fry. Throw to first. Not in time. So now George legs out an infield hit. And two for two here tonight. Fry gave it a good effort and almost threw him out. And George now is up to number 19 on the all-time hit list with this one. This hit looked a whole lot like his first one, except the first one went off the shortstop's glove and drove in a run. So George gets the rolls going here in the fourth, and here's Wally Joyner. Fourth hit of the ball game for Kansas City. The Royals so far tonight have run on Nolan Ryan. He is fairly slow delivering the ball to the plate, but the problem they've got is Yvonne Rodriguez behind the plate. It throws him out at about a 50% clip, and he's two for two tonight, including Brett. Pulled the string and had Wally way out in front. It's a ball in the strike. The two guys. In the all-time hit list that George is amongst right now, we Willie Keeler from the late 1800s, early 1900s, and Wahoo Sam Crawford also played ball back in that time. Keeler was a 341 lifetime hitter. Not necessarily a home run guy, not the power hitter that Brett was. But he did have over 200 hits in a season eight different times throughout his career. And Sam Crawford played in 1899 through 1917 so he played in the big leagues 19 years his last year he hit just 173 but he was a 309 hitter lifetime and he had over 300 11 times in his career George has hit over 300 11 times in his career two great players from the early 1900s and George's name right there in the record books with them two balls and two strikes now on Joyner Red on first base, nobody out. The Royals lead this one two to nothing. Looking for their first win of the three game series and just their second win of the year down here in Arlington. Colin 
Ryan. No decisions this year against the Royals. But only given up one earned run in an earlier performance. A 24 and 13 lifetime. Two and a half runs given up per game. Here comes his payoff pitch. George is holding it first. Chopper on the ground. That's Palmero, the first baseman. He'll throw on to second for one and no relay to first. Put out goes 3 6. It's the first out here in the fourth inning. Right fielder one is Sam Well. While he continues to struggle there you see Palmero's throw plenty of time but Houston knows how George Brett plays the game he knew he wasn't going to have any chance to make a throw on not that he was going to get Wally anyway with the ball hit that slowly American League just loaded with solid defensive first baseman right now and Palmero is one of them here's Juan Samuel called out his last time up Ryan got him on a curveball and knocks him down there. Watching Samuel over the last couple weeks, it looks like the way pitchers would want to go after him would be fastballs in on the hands, trying to keep him from commanding the outside part of the plate where he's so good. And then fastballs and breaking balls down and away. I think to keep him off the plate, you're going to have to establish inside. It gets a little scary when it gets up that close. Let's see if he can hang in against Ryan. A ball and no strikes here. Joiner with a short lead at first. Big swing. You can tell he was not going to be run off the plate by that high inside fastball. That was an answer swing. Some kind of rip by Sam Well after being knocked down. He's just saying to Noli, you can come up and in on me, but I'm going to keep right on hacking. You can knock me down, but you can't run me off. That's the way hitters have to approach the game. If you get knocked down, that next swing wants to be your best. Counts even at a ball and a strike. Bounce the hook and Rodriguez able to keep it in front of him. Nice play by the Ranger catcher. I think Pudge Rodriguez would probably be the catcher on that all 5 9 team now, but he's only 5 9. Better than 200 pounds. Got a pretty decent club. I want to take a look at your pitching staff. That's where you're going to raise the mound a little bit. Problem. Tom Gordon is one of the few <laughs> 5 9 pitchers around now. And he's got a bad shoulder. It should be off the list next week. Now the 2 1. Breaking ball is chopped foul over the Royals' dugout. Royals scored a run in the top of the first. Brett knocked home Miller. Kozlowski provided a run in the third. Royals now batting in the top of the fourth. away at the plate. Rodriguez didn't know which way it bounced off of his glove and Joyner moves up 90 feet. He's out there now in scoring position. Still just one out. Curve ball got away from Ryan and Rodriguez taking another look. He slid his feet well the last pitch but didn't get out there too well this time instead tried to backhand it Went off the heel of his glove and over behind Sam Wall. Amos Otis used to point the opposite direction and occasionally would get a runner all the way to third on it. Didn't make him real popular with the catcher, but pretty effective for our club. Odie had all kind of tricks in the bag, didn't he? Didn't he, though? I think he stole second base more times without sliding than anyone I ever saw. He's going to be a coach for the Colorado Rockies. That's Joyner on at second base. Fielder's choice this inning. Wally now just two for 22 on this road trip. He's out here earlier this afternoon. They're working with him, trying to keep his hands back a little better, saying that he's sliding on most everything. On the outside corner, caught him looking. Juan Samuel doesn't like the call, but Mark Johnson has been pretty consistent. 
this evening giving that outside corner to both pitchers. Juan may as well get his money's worth now. I think he's been tossed. Hal McCray taking up the argument for him. Not a lot the manager can do for you here. The damage has already been done. And umpires don't like you getting in their face right away. Samuel probably right in his reaction to the call of this pitch, but wrong in the way he went after it. Pitch is pretty close. He was anticipating the walk. But instead, he's punched out. Samuel's point of view is going to be that that's a Hall of Famer standing out there. You don't need to give him that pitch. Brent Main goes after the first pitch. Loop to center. Gonzalez coming on. It bounces away from him. A run's going to score. Joyner comes in from second base. Brent Main went after the first pitch and looped it into short center field. It eluded Gonzalez. And the Royals now lead it three to nothing. Juan Gonzalez does not have outstanding speed. Probably better suited to be a left or right fielder coming in on this one. Had it in the glove, but it jars loose. And the Royals take advantage. Any, that's one thing that Brian McRae does so well. He takes those head first dives and you've got to be able to catch the ball first but you've also got to have the soft landing so that you can cradle the ball in your glove and you don't knock it out on impact and Gonzalez that time had it and it got away from him. Now here's Jeff Conine. He was called out on strikes his first time up. Ryan in this inning has missed with his fastball on a couple of pitches. You've seen Rodriguez slide to the outside corner. And he's missed badly inside, an indication that he's trying to overthrow a little bit right now, or is overthrowing a little bit. Ryan has struck out four in the ballgame. The Royals have collected five hits. Brent Main has the last one. We mentioned in the opener of this series on Tuesday night split that the Ranger outfield has made a collective 34 errors this year. That's incredible in itself. And those are just the physical errors. They've also, according to Toby Hara, made some real. And this ball is launched high and deep to center, but Kevin Kozlowski has plenty of room. So Gonzalez hits the ball hard, but flies to center, and he's over two tonight. Make plans now to spend Labor Day weekend at Royal Stadium. Sunday, September 6th is Smokey the Bear Watch Day. As the Royals face the Chicago White Sox, all fans 14 and under with a paid admission get a sporty blue watch courtesy of Smokey the Bear and the Royals. Pretty good homestand coming up for the Royals that will start on Monday night. These Rangers will be in town for three games. The Royals still have a chance to catch them and possibly finish fourth in the division. And the White Sox, who would like to challenge for first place in the West, will be in for four games over the weekend. And the first place Toronto Blue Jays from the Eastern Division will round out that 10 game homestand. So the Rangers, the White Sox, and the Toronto Blue Jays in town starting next Monday. Good swing from Palmero. He fouls the fastball straight back. He's down on the count here. No balls and two strikes. Tonight's ball game looks a lot like his last time out for Pichardo. Coasted through the first four innings. He's gone three and two thirds here tonight. He's allowed just two hits. Now the 0-2. This is badly outside. Guy Hansen will tell you that Pichardo tried to overpower people his last time out and says that because of experience that probably won't happen again. Solidly hit at the shortstop. That's David Howard there to hold on the line drive off the bat of Palmero. They're gone in order in the fourth. Royal still on top, 3 nothing. was at the plate the last half inning when Trent Maine got a little carried away on the bases so it'll be Conine up here again to lead off the Royal half of the fifth. It'll be followed by Kozlowski and Howard against the Ranger starter Nolan Ryan. Jeff now two for nine in this series. Getting a long look out in left field since the injury to Kevin McReynolds. Reynolds will probably be activated after the rosters can be expanded September 1st. 
He's on the road trip and working in the cage and also in the outfield. Breaking ball misses down and away. It's two balls and a strike. Nolan Ryan had a super year last season. Opponents hit just 172 against him. That was the best in the major leagues and the second lowest of his career. He averaged just over nine base runners per nine innings. And this year, opponents are not hitting a whole lot better against him. Just 235 for the season. Kevin Brown is now the ace of the Rangers staff. He's in his mid-20s, so they would expect him to be good for a number of years to come. And Jose Guzman, another right-hander, is pitching effectively. Back after a couple years of arm problems. So Ryan not expected to carry the entire load for the Rangers anymore. Here comes the payoff pitch. Hop straight back. That ball going to reach the seats about four rows back. Rodriguez gave a good long look. The flags on center field are still now. Wind will have no effect on this game probably for the rest of the evening. It was blowing out earlier on. Very delightful week this week in Arlington, Texas. Toby Harrow was put in as interim manager just before the All-Star game. Club has gone 18 and 25 since he has taken over. In the air to left field, Reimer coming in. He's there now. And makes the catch. One out in the fifth. Get a free calculator just for trying the Amico Motor Club, and you'll be supporting the Children's Miracle Network. Pick up your enrollment form from your neighborhood Amico dealer. Well, you needed a calculator to total the footage on Kevin Kozlowski's last at bat. He homered to right center field. It went just over 400 feet. One for one lifetime against Nolan Ryan. Let's see how he goes after him here. He got a fastball his last time up. Rodriguez sets up on the outside corner. Ryan misses down and away. Kozlowski right now you would probably project him as a fourth outfielder possibly a fifth outfielder on a real ball club but he can do a lot of things that he didn't used to develop he could be an everyday player. Good eye right there. Again Ryan misses down and away. Let's take a look at his last time up and his first major league home run. He drove it pretty well. Although as you said there was a little wind blowing at the blowing out. But that one didn't need a whole lot of help. Slosky way out in front of the changeup. I wonder if Kevin was thinking as he came to the plate this time, do you suppose Nolan Ryan will buzz me high and tight? I know if that was me, I would give him a little room and maybe just go ahead and give him that first pitch. Here comes the 2 1. Got that one by him, and the count's even. has struck out four. The Royals have scored in every inning against him except the second. It was the only night or the only inning that he has retired the club in order. And now the interesting foul down behind the Royals bullpen. Good crowd on hand here tonight. Ryan still a good drawing card down here. Rangers are averaging about 29,000 per game, but their attendance has fallen off since the All-Star break when they had trouble playing here at Arlington Stadium. Got him on the curve. The curveball throws Kozlowski, and he's the second out of the inning. It's five strikeouts for Nolan Ryan, and they have all been called third strikes. He may have been helped out a little bit to pick up the inside corner. So Nolan Ryan continues to put up the strikeout numbers. We have to wonder if his strikeout numbers will ever be broken, Denny. Had 19 strikeouts in the game four different times. He had 60 days, his last no hitter. Ten strikeouts in a ball game is a bunch. Well, he's done that 215 times, at least 10 in a ball game. 
Oh, I thought it was a bunch. It was a bunch for me. Just another night out for him. Two balls and no strikes here. He did for the 215th time on August the 6th this year against the Oakland A's. That made him the oldest pitcher ever to strike out 10 men in one game. Well, every time he takes the mound, he's got a chance to be the oldest pitcher to do something. Behind here, three balls and no strikes to David Howard. David's having a pretty good road trip. He's played solid defense, even some spectacular plays mixed in. Now five for 13 in batting. Looks like he had the green light on three and oh, but he draws the walk instead. Couldn't that be something having the green light on three and oh against Ryan. But on at first base now with two outs. That'll get Greg Jeffries to the plate. Jeffries is one for two. He singled his last time up. Royals will travel after tonight's ball game. At for Detroit, where they'll take on the Tigers tomorrow night. Day games on Saturday and Sunday. Jeffries hits from the middle of the batter's box. And crowds the plate somewhat. It took a little too long there, and Jeffries asked for time. Greg's average is just over 300. He looks like he's 100% now from the hamstring injury, which cost him some time about 10 days ago. Howard on at first base has a short lead. But he draws the throw anyhow. Ryan is aware that he's not all that quick to the plate, so he'll throw to first base on a regular basis. Royals have tried to run against him this evening, but had no success yet. This guy right there would love to have him try it again. Rodriguez looks like the type of catcher that over the next few years only the premier base dealers in the American League will try to go against him, especially in tight game situations. Ryan behind in the count, two balls and no strikes. Delivers upstairs and it goes to 3-0. and oh. Yankees have a 5 to nothing lead over Minnesota. They're in the bottom of the sixth from the Metrodome. Jones continue to struggle to keep pace with the Oakland A's. The A's have the night off. Walked him on four pitches. What a strange game this has been. Split. The Royals score their first run all the way from first base on a single off the shortstop's glove. They get Kevin Kozlowski's first major league home run, 401 feet against Nolan Ryan. Nolan hadn't walked anybody up to this point in the game and then throws eight straight balls to put two on after two were out here in the fifth. Eight straight balls, but he's not missing badly, so. Continue to expect him to throw strikes. Keith Miller's at the plate. He was hit by a pitch and scored his first time up. Glide to center in the third. So Keith Miller already his third at bat of the evening against Nolan Ryan. Ryan has tried to work him inside. Probably a good way to go after Miller. He commands the outer half of the plate, the middle of the plate to the outer half. A lot of pitchers recently have tried to tie him up. Pretty well hit to the gap in left center field. Reimer on the run, still on the run, reaches out and can't flag it down. One run scores. Here comes Jeffries. He'll score easily. And Keith Miller doubles to the gap in left center field. And the Royals add on here. Now leading it five to nothing. And you get a pretty good idea right there why the Rangers have underachieved so badly this season. Now, Miller smoked this ball, no doubt about it. But a good left fielder will make this catch nine out of ten times. Reimer appears to be just kind of cruising over, never really turned it on, and doesn't come up with it. And you think about the Rangers in the past, Denny, before Reimer, it was Pete Encavilla who had trouble out there. 
both cases you're talking about real good offensive players who really struggle with the glove. It's Brian Bohannon beginning to toss in the Rangers bullpen. He's just begun to warm up so he won't be ready for Brett. And here's George two for two tonight against Ryan. Singled home a run back in the first. Added on another infield single in the fourth. George continues the charge to 3,000. Miller on at second base with two outs. There's another base hit. Brett singles to left. Miller around third. He'll be waved on home, and the Royals will lead it six to nothing. George Brett is three for three and has a couple RBIs. And have you noticed that as George moves closer and closer to 3,000, he doesn't seem to be taking as many pitches. He's going to try to go out and get it, hit that pitch off the outside part of the plate, drills it to left field. He's three for three on the night. He walked last night, and that was his first walk split since August 9th. That is base hit number 2,965. So George needs just 35 more to reach 3,000. Looking more every day like he'll do it this year. Ranger fans have to wonder if they're seeing George in this stadium for the last time. If they are, he's putting on a show. Wally Joyner out in front of the fastball there. It's a ball and a strike. Joyner 0 for 2, but he scored a run. Got on in a fielder's choice his last time up. And you've got to wonder about George Brett if he continues to hit at this pace like he has over the last month. He will have about nine games to work with at the end of the season to get hit number 3,000. Of course, the Royals would like him to do it in Royal Stadium, but do they play him on that last road trip that takes him to Minnesota and California? You remember when Hank Aaron was going for his home run title, the commissioner forced the Braves to play him on the road. They wanted to hold him out of the lineup till they got back to Atlanta. Okay, Vincent has made a number of rulings lately, and none of them have gone over very well. George having a big night here tonight. Here comes the 2-2 to Joyner. After the high fastball and fouls it straight back. Brett with two runs batted in tonight that ties him with Mickey Mantle for 33rd on the all-time RBI list. Let's pause five seconds now for station identification. This is the Royals Television Network. This is WDAF-TV, Kansas City. George is at the point of his career where the names don't get any bigger. Who's bigger than Babe Ruth and Mickey Mantle? Two balls, two strikes here. Brett on first base with two outs. The Royals lead it six to nothing. And the count goes full. So a couple two out walks have come back to haunt Ryan. Keith Miller got a key two out hits. He drove in two runs. Brett added another single. Continues to work in the Rangers bullpen. They're not holding Brett on at first. They'll have a big jump here. Ryan delivers down and away. That's ball four. Third walk of the inning that he has issued. And the Royals still have something going. All this happening after two were out, and that's going to do it for Nolan Ryan. Toby Hara has already signaled the bullpen, and it'll be the left-hander, Brian Bohannon, coming on. I bet he gets a standing ovation. As well, he should. Not just a great pitcher, but one of the class acts in sports today. And they are on their feet at Arlington Stadium. With Ryan leaving and a relief pitcher coming on, we'll break for this announcement. So Nolan Ryan goes four and two thirds innings here tonight. He allows seven hits. 
Seven runs already, and he's also responsible for Joyner on at third. Now here's Brent Main. He's the ninth Royal to bat in the inning. It's a high breaking ball. Main one for two. Single home a run his last time up. Fastball in the outside corner. Bohannon, a former first round draft pick back in 87. Been up and down each of the last couple years. That's Joyner leading away from third. Thurman on at first. Breaking ball fooled Maine right there. Royals have had six base runners in the inning. They've scored four of them. In the air, left field. That's Kevin Reimer. And that's the inning, but it was a big one for the Royals. They bat nine, score four, and lead it seven to nothing. Stadium, Arlington, Texas. The Royals on this road trip coming in here tonight, hitting just 223 as a team since leaving Royal Stadium, but they score seven runs on seven hits against Nolan Ryan. How do you figure it? Well, you don't figure it. You just hope for some consistency, which the Royals have not shown on this trip. Six runs scored in the four-game losing streak coming into tonight, but they score four runs in the last half inning. They break out on a night against a pitcher that you really like to break out against, but again, you'd like to spread that offense around over a number of ball games and Try to get a little bit closer to the 500 and a little bit closer to the Rangers in the standings. Noli helped out, of course, by walking three men in that big explosion by the Royals in the fifth. And the Royals scored two of those base runners. So he put Lito Pichardo. Stick to a comfortable lead here. It's the Ranger third baseman, Dean Palmer. He grounded out his first time up. Pichardo, no runs on two hits through the first four innings. And this is the inning that he ran into trouble his last time out against the White Sox. Went through the White Sox very easily for four innings. Steve Sachs hit a two-run homer off him in the fifth, and it was downhill from there. He needs to go five innings to qualify for the win here tonight. Actually, the Royals were in a little bit of pitching trouble this evening. They needed... A number of innings out of Pichardo. Their bullpen had been worked pretty heavily the last two nights. They're in good shape if they can get it into the late innings, but if he would have gotten shelled early, it could have been in trouble sending people out to work a number of innings. Dean Palmer has not been a hot bat recently, but he's got outstanding power. And the count goes full here. Palmer, a good fastball hitter, a good low ball hitter. Low ball right side. Palmer has had some injury problems this year. He's had a bad thumb recently. It cost him five games just a couple weeks ago. He also had a bad shoulder earlier in the year. Not an injury that cost him ball games, but also led to some throwing errors. He leads off the bottom of the fifth with the walk. Catcher, let's hope this does not open the floodgates against Pichardo. Hopefully he'll be able to get out of this inning. Here's the Rangers catcher, Yvonne Rodriguez. Rodriguez 0 for 1 tonight. Just 1 for 8 in the series. The Royals have held him down pretty well so far. Check of the runner. Breaking ball is just off the outside edge. I know at least one occasion this evening that pitch had been called a strike. And the batter that was called out is now up in the clubhouse. And Samuel ejected after being called out by Mark Johnson. Skied to right center. Thurman over, makes the call, the catch, and the first out. Thurman came on in right field for Samuel. And Pudge Rodriguez now 0 for 2 tonight, and here's Jeff Houston. Houston, a left-handed hitter all the way.
He played well against the Royals earlier this year. Although that was at second base. Ethan was their shortstop. He goes after the first pitch and loops one to short center field. Kozlowski drifts in. And after issuing the leadoff walk to Palmer, Pichardo has come back to retire the next two. Hippo's really been on cruise control tonight. It looks like he's going to be the one pitcher on the Royal staff this year who benefits from a lot of runs. They've been averaging five runs a game for him coming in, seven on the board already, making it easy for him. Gave up a lot of ground balls early in the game, but the last six outs recorded have all been in the air. A little bit of a shift in this ball game, and there's their number nine hitter, Jeff Fry. He singled up the middle his last time up. Talk about Fry being an overachiever. Rangers over the years have not had many of those types of players. They've had very talented guys. A little bit up and down in their performance. Scotty Fletcher might be a hitter that they had here for a few years that was an overachiever. And some of the people who follow the Rangers and cover them on a regular basis say that he is exactly the type of player they need. In fact, even need more like him. A ball and a strike here. And Palmer on at first base with two outs. Royals have out hit the Rangers eight to two. Pulled the string and missed downstairs. It's now two and one. Al McRae will keep a close eye on Pichardo. Talk about him getting a lot of run support this year. Al has also protected him somewhat and getting him out of ball games in the middle innings. He does not want to overextend him. Good breaking ball there and the counts even. Nobody working in either of the bullpens. Broke his bat. Howard the shortstop will take the short throw to second and that will do it for the Rangers in the bottom of the fifth. They strand a base runner. Runs on top seven nothing. Guys, a fly ball to center field where Juan Gonzalez hauls it in. One of our sponsors is Southwest Airlines, providing low, unrestricted fares to many exciting destinations. Southwest Airlines, it's just plain smart. So one pitch, one out here in the sixth. Jeff Conine is now 0 for 3. Here's one of the heroes of tonight's game. Kevin Kozlowski hit his first Major League homer his first time up tonight against Nolan Ryan. Against the left-hander Brian Bohannon. Kevin's also struck out. Brian McRae getting the night off in center field. Been fighting a slump recently. Got in on him there and fouled it off over the Royals dugout. A ball and a strike here. Cal McRae will tell you that he likes what he's seen so far in Kozlowski. He actually made an impression in spring training. Royals held on to him till the last cut before breaking camp to go north. Kozlowski got a lot of playing time. Swung the bat pretty well, played great defense, even threw out some base runners. Another guy who Kevin has impressed is veteran scout Buck O'Neill. Buck says Kozlowski has proven already that he can hit the slider low and away, and that's the pitch that gives everybody trouble. You may see one here from Bohannon. Bohannon missed with it, and it's two and two. Got a winner in that trivia contest yet? Couldn't figure I'd get that one. It was about base stealers. We do have a winner. Hmm. Question was, who was the Royals' first great base stealer taking at least 30 stolen bases eight years in a row? Marlene Montano from Topeka, Kansas, gave us the correct answer. Freddie Pottek. Midget could run the bases. So Marlene wins a round trip from Kansas City to Chicago on Southwest Airlines. Plus a shot at the grand prize of a weekend in Las Vegas. Freddie could get it done. Now David Howard will be the hitter. Walked and scored his last time up. 0 for 1 officially tonight. Has Kozlowski on at first with one out. 
The Royals blew it open with four runs in the top of the fifth. Hand checks the runner. Breaking ball hits off the inside edge. Palmero at first base will play behind Kozlowski. David may have chased a bad one, and it's 0-2. David Howard has given the Royals everything that they had asked for out of him since the All-Star break. Getting close to 400 in that period of time and playing great defense. Just got a piece of that one to stay alive. Imagine that David Howard over the last six weeks, Denny, has put himself in a position where the Royals would have to protect him on that list of 15 for the expansion draft. Well, it wasn't the case at the All-Star break. A ball and two strikes here. Well, I think if the Florida Marlins and the Colorado Rockies have been paying any attention, they've seen David, as you say, stamp himself a major league shortstop last month and a half. swinging pulled the string and had Howard out in front that's the first strikeout for Third Bohannon second out in the inning we have really seen a lot of scouts around the ballparks recently everybody doing their final notes for the season getting ready for the offseason trades possible free agents that would be on the market and coming up with that list of 15 protected for the expansion draft. Greg Jeffries is one for two officially. Singled in the third, walked and scored in the fifth. In the air to center field. Juan Gonzalez in and over in the third out. Royals get a base runner, but stranded. They stranded four in the ball game, but still shut out the Downing has played on a lot of winners. He's got the most out of his ability throughout his career. Kevin Reimer. But makes the first out of the sixth inning right here. And now here's Kevin Reimer. Reimer 0 for 2 tonight. That's three RBIs in the series. His only hit was a two-run home run. Got another RBI here last night when he was hit by a pitch with the bases loaded. Toby Hara also wants to bring Rick Manning, a former teammate and a fine defensive outfielder with the Cleveland Indians, to camp next year with the Rangers. Manning is a broadcaster with the Cleveland Indians. I think it's a good idea from the start to get things going in spring training, but I don't think it'll really work unless they keep him with the club all year. Solid outfield defense is not something you work on in spring training and then forget about when the season starts. Probably need to stay with the program the entire year and work with it every day. What the Royals are doing now with Lynn Jones, their first base coach. He's working with the young outfielders. Jeff Conine, left field is a new position for him. Juan Samuel works every day. He has not played a lot of outfield. This ball's driven to center field. Kozlowski going back, and it is gone. Kevin Reimer homers for the second time in the series. And that breaks the shutout, but the Royals still lead it 7-1. to one. That's his 16th of the season. That's his 54th RBI. Kevin Reimer hoping to end this season with a bang just the way he did last year. From August the 1st to the end of last season, Jose Canseco was the only player in the league who hit more homers than Reimer did. And that thing got out of here in a hurry. A line drive. Picked on a sinker, down and away. And rode it on out of here. Now here's Ruben Sierra. He's over two tonight. Still nobody working in the Royals pen. Sierra should get something to handle here. He's ahead in the count two and zero. Oh. That 
by the way, only the eighth home run that Pichardo has allowed in 120 innings this year. Pichardo should be a guy that could have some success keeping the ball in the park with the sinking fastball, the hard slider that he's got. He also has that split finger pitch to use it as an off-speed pitch. And working half of his games in Royal Stadium, he should have a good ratio. Three balls and a strike here. The tail of the tape on Reimer's home run split 427 feet, so to go along with his 444-footer the other night. It's not hurting his average any, is he? No. Sierra swung at a bad one there, and the count goes full. Recently, of a possible trade with the Rangers and the Pirates. Got him looking. Fastball got the outside corner. And Sierra called out on strikes. Over through the fastball and missed upstairs. Gonzalez is a big one. 6'3, 210. He's still just 22 years old. Looks back on the breaking ball and fists one down behind first. Joiner into foul territory to flag that one down, and that will take care of the Rangers in the bottom of the six. But they get a run. Now the Royals 7 to 1 over Texas. At Whiteside, born in Sykeston, lives now in Charleston, Missouri. Third Ranger pitcher of the night. Working here to Keith Miller, who doubled home two runs his last time up. White side has been very effective. This is his seventh appearance. Has worked eight innings, giving nine hits. That ball hit toward the corner in left field. Reimer racing over, makes the catch. Good play by Kevin Reimer, who just homered in the last inning. Matt Whiteside there was purchased from Oklahoma City. Triple A ball on the 5th of August. He had pitched three scoreless innings in two games before finally allowing a run on Friday. He had a great year going in the minor league. Converted all 28 save tries this year at Tulsa. Eight of them at Oklahoma City. Started the year at Tulsa and was promoted to Oklahoma City July 11th. George Brett going for his fourth hit tonight. Won't get it. Right now at Long John Silver's, you'll find the fish and shrimp combo for just a buck 99. Go fish at Long John Silver's. Whiteside, the first pitcher tonight to retire George Brett, who had three singles in the game and a couple of runs batted in. And George had a good swing on that one. It's a fastball down and in, and it's hit so sharply. If it wasn't hit right at Palmero, he would be four for four. Wally Joyner up there now. 0 for 2 with a walk tonight. Wally hitless in his last four games before tonight. 0 for his last 10. Whiteside, a fastball slider pitcher. Looks like his fastball is probably going to be pretty straight. Looks like a dart thrower. He's kind of a short armor. Hitter should get a good look at it. Breaking ball down and in. Whiteside, a 25th round draft pick, graduate of Arcus, Arkansas State University in Jonesboro. Right down in there. You know who the baseball coach is there now? Bill Bethea is a longtime assistant for Cliff Gustafson at the University of Texas. Driven to left field. Reimer back. And Whiteside retires the Royals in order. For only the second time tonight. 7 to 1, Kansas City. Fans 14 under with a paid admission and a sporty blue watch, courtesy of Smokey the Bear and the Royals. Rafael Palmero now to lead off the Texas half of the seventh inning. Rafi 0 for 2 in this one, 0 for 9 in the series, and batting well under 200 in his last 39 ball games. For a strike from Pichardo. Hippo had his shutout bid 
Broken in the sixth on a Kevin Reimer home run. Foul back by Palmero. Palmero led the major leagues in doubles last year, but lately it's been a home run or nothing for Raffi. Seven of his last eight extra base hits have gone out of the park. He got 15 homers on the year, but his average has fallen off badly this year. Down about 70 points. Drives this one toward the corner in right field, and that may be a double. A stand-up two-bagger for Palmero to begin the seventh. Well, there have been times in his career where he has been criticized for not hitting enough home runs. He's always been a line drive hitter, a left center, right center gap shooter. And if he gets out in front of a breaking ball, he can pull it down into the corner, but more of a doubles kind of hitter with extra base type power. But not doing much of either so far this year. He's at second for Dean Palmer, who's 0 for 1 with a walk tonight. RBI opportunity for Palmer, who has driven in 62 this year, but 16 of his last 17 runs batted in have come on home runs. What has happened to the Minnesota Twins? They're shut out tonight by the Yankees, five to nothing. Toronto, after making the big trade for David Cohn today, beat Milwaukee five to four. And when you win ball games against the contenders in your division, that's like winning two games. You count double when you've got the head-on competition. Minnesota Twins, and reading things about them the last few weeks, I understand their defense has faltered as well, and that's something they've always been very good at. That was my pick in the West. Kind of smarting a little bit right now. <laughs> Palmer cues it off the end of the bat. Pichardo will go to first. Palmero moves up. I'll bet the New York media is having a field day split with that David Cohn trade to Toronto. The Blue Jays giving up reserve infielder Jeff Kent and a player to be named later. I think the boys are sharpening the pencils a little bit, huh? Mm -hmm. Here's a look at a couple of the National League scores. There's an abbreviated schedule over there tonight. It's the Houston Astros with a 4-1 four to four to lead over the Cardinals after six innings. In a very abbreviated schedule, the Montreal Expos were scheduled to play the Atlanta Braves this evening. Game is scheduled to start about three hours ago. Don't know if there's a rain delay, a power outage, or what. Nothing in on the ticker on that one yet. They have not started the game. It's raining throughout the eastern third of the country. And there's an RBI single for Ivan Rodriguez. Make it a 7-2 game. Pudge's first hit tonight. Well, that little squibber off the end of the bat of Dean Palmer advanced the runner to third base, and that's something that Toby Harris is trying to instill in the players since he took over as the manager of the Texas Ranger. More situation hitting. Advancing base runners. Don't try to knock down the fences with every swing. Let's let the game dictate what we try to do with the bat. And the boys are stirring. Yeah, the boys are going to go to work in the pen. The right-hander is Shiflet. The left-hander is Magnante. Al McRae getting just a little bit antsy here. He knows he needs a victory in this one. Salvage something from this series and get on to Detroit. Jeff Houston up there is struck out and flied to center. Drives this one to center field, but plenty of room for Kozlowski. Out number two in the inning. A number nine hitter, Jeff Fry, was scheduled. Looks like we may get a pinch hitter here. Fry has been called back. Nobody has left the dugout yet. Ryan Downing is in the on-deck circle, but he's the leadoff man. Rangers have some options over on their bench. Gino Petrali is a... Backup catcher, he's a left-handed hitter. Al Newman is a switch hitter. He would be a possibility. Dave Hulse, a reserve outfielder, would be another possibility. It's going to be Newman. Al Newman coming on to pinch hit here. 
Him in a 230 average for the season. But two for three is a pinch hitter. Him and a local guy from Kansas City went to Bishop Hogan High School. Former Minnesota Twin. Pichardo asks for and receives a new baseball to work on him. Newman a contact hitter. Not much power from either side of the plate, so the Royals will play him straight up in the outfield. Fairly shallow. They'll try to bunch him. He's trying to take away the gaps. That one missed outside. Pichardo has walked one in the game, struck out two. Hot shot, Howard the shortstop with the throw across, and that's the inning. The Rangers get another run. It's seven to two Royals after seven. Right now. How smart. And Berenger, who will start in the Detroit series, shaking hands with Ipolito Pichardo. That's an indication that he might be out of this ballgame. And a new pitcher into the ball game for the Texas Rangers is Todd Burns. Comes on with a three and four record. 3.7 earned run average. This is his 22nd appearance. Ten of those have been starts. He's worked almost 88 innings while allowing 78 hits. Struck out 47 while issuing 26 walks. He's got pretty good numbers across the board. Facing Gary Thurman, who singled in a run his only time up tonight. He took over for Juan Samuel. That's Al Newman, who has taken over at second base. Now after pitch hitting for Jeff Fry in the seventh. Sam well before sitting down tonight two strikeouts against Nolan Ryan makes him 23rd on Noli's all time K list and only three current players have struck out more against Ryan than Juan Samuel and the last one earned Samuel an early shower tonight as he argued to call third strike with home plate umpire Mark Johnson who was tossed out of the ball game. Todd Burns one of many pitchers who have auditioned for a spot on this Ranger roster this year. Todd had pitched nine scoreless innings over three games before allowing two runs in the seventh inning on Saturday. That ball hit to right. Sierra started back as it measured now and makes the catch. Todd Burns has always had a pretty good arm. Previously with the Oakland A's fastball slider pitcher. Change speeds on both of those pitches. So he's a two pitch pitcher but they essentially turn into four with the change of speeds. He works now to Brent Maine, who has an RBI single in three tries. But then a little work with Burns' delivery. They've cut down on it a little bit. He's more compact now than he has been in past years. to swing over the top. The Royals coming in here tonight had lost four straight. His numbers would indicate that he's got improved control this year. Good tight slider on that last pitch. In the center field, Gonzalez there. Out number two. The Rangers coming in tonight had won three straight for the first time since July 9th, 10th, and 11th. Toby Harris' first three games as their manager. Looks like that winning streak is going to end. Jeff Conine at the plate, 0 for 3. Jeff, 2 for 11 in this series now, and fooled badly by that one. Tomorrow night in Detroit, right-hander Rick Reed against lefty Frank Tanana. We'll have that one for you on most of these same stations. Todd Burns ahead of the count. 0 and 2. I don't think that lid fits. He better go get another one. He needs seven and three quarters. That's seven and a quarter. How's that hat fit? Nope, having trouble with it. That's a signal. He's calling his own game for the catcher. The number of times <laughs> that he covers the tee will be the number of the pitch. This is pitch number four. Good pitch. 
See, he calling his own game, got the strikeout. He made Keep the catchers out of the game, he'll made, do well. Made Conine uncomfortable with all the gyrations. The Royals out in order, still leading 7-2. On the American League tonight, Milwaukee scored a run in the top of the ninth, but fell by a run to the Toronto Blue Jays. Final score there, 5-4. to four. It was New York shutting out Minnesota 5 to nothing. Melito Perez for the Yankees this evening picks up his 11th win. And Cleveland has scored a single run in the top of the third and lead 1 to nothing over Seattle. Mariners hit on the bottom of the third in the Kingdom this evening. And here's Steve Shiflett on in relief of Ipolito Pichardo. Shiflett making his 21st appearance of the season. 1 and 3 record, 2.57 earned run average. Steve Shiflett, the second pitcher we've seen tonight from a small town in Missouri. Matt Whiteside from Charleston, and now Shifflett from Pleasant Hill. Steve Shifflett, who didn't start pitching until the age of 20. Downing pops it up. Miller out, Thurman in, and it's Gary Thurman who makes the catch. So Brian Downing now one for four on the night, and that'll bring up Reimer, who homered for the second time in the series back in the sixth. Left fielder, Kevin Reimer. Kevin Reimer launched his 16th home run in the sixth inning. Another solo shot. So both of his hits in this series have gone the distance. He was retired last night on a line drive that almost knocked the glove off the hand of Wally Joyner at first base. Puts 1-1 one, one pitch to him, fouled away. Reimer does not get cheated on many of his swings. Even on the breaking ball that he gets, he's able to wait back pretty well and get a lot of bat speed generated. He had two at-bats here in the first game of this series against Apier. Was, one was an 11-pitch at-bat. He kept fouling pitches off. And his next time up, he had a 9-pitch at-bat. So in two at-bats, he got 20 pitches to work against Kevin Apier. You see the high leg kick It'll allow him to keep his weight back and his hands back. Tough to keep your balance with that kind of move at the plate. Apier will tell you that Reimer is a very tough out for him. Uh, Kevin was two for four last year with a home run against Apier. Kevin Reimer who played for Brent Maine's father in college. And this one go off the glove and shortstop David Howard. And let's see how they score this one. Probably going to go as a base hit because this is a difficult play for the shortstop to make. He set up to make his throw a little bit early, but if he had been a little bit more patient, he had a legitimate shot to throw out Reimer. From the edge of the outfield grass, Reimer was no more than halfway down to first base. And David Howard has the arm to throw out runners from deep short. Now Ruben Sierra hitless in three tries tonight. I wonder if Brett Maine called his dad out in California before the game tonight and said, how should we pitch to Kevin Reimer? You coached him. You created that monster. Right. What do we do with it? A ball and a strike to Sierra. His only play is to first base. Ruben Sierra continues to hear boos in his home park. 0 for 4 tonight, and now Juan Gonzalez up there. Juan is grounded out, flied to center, and popped up to the first baseman. with 34 home runs that Gonzalez might have more than 88 runs batted in on the year. But 23 of his 34 home runs this year have been solo shots. 
Not that there's anything wrong with 88 runs batted in. And I think he's got a legitimate shot to drive in 100. What he has to do is avoid a slump, keep from striking out. He had a big slump at the end of last year. Hit 303 the first half of the season, just 233 after the All Star break. Went for a bad pitch there. From September the 1st on, last season, Gonzalez had the third lowest average in the major leagues and hit only one home run in his last 33 games a year ago. The one-two pitch to him got him. Good inning for Steve Shifflett and the Royals. To the ninth we go. Kansas City on top, seven to two. Hit ball tonight that stayed in the ballpark. Rafael Palmero lined this shot to Howard at short to close out the Rangers' half of the fourth. Long John Silver's catch of the day goes to the Royals. David Howard. Kenny Rogers is the fifth Rangers pitcher of the evening. Rogers comes on here for the 63rd time this season. Has a two and five record. Earned run average under three points. He has been the busiest pitcher in the league this year. 63 appearances. Four straight year that he's been in at least 60 ball games. Got a strong arm. And that's one of the differences between the National League and the American League. With the DH in the American League, you don't use nearly as many relievers. This is a good league if you happen to be the closer or the setup man. But if you look at the National League totals at the end of the year, you're going to have a number of pitchers over there that will work in 60 or more ball games, and they're not necessarily the frontline reliever. Kevin Kozlowski at the plate already has the most memorable hit of his career, a home run off Nolan Ryan that went 401 feet. Gave the Royals a 2-0 lead at the time. That was back in the third inning. Since then, he struck out and walked. Inside to Kozlowski. The Royals, you know, signed a young man who is considered probably the best high school outfielder in the nation, Johnny Damon, from a high school down in Orlando, Florida. Had a bad senior year of high school, but has really put together a Fabulous first season in the pros. Had three more hits last night for the Gulf Coast Royals. They have high hopes for that young man. Certainly Kevin Kozlowski playing himself into the Royals' future this season. There's his second hit of the night. This one coming off the southpaw, Kenny Rogers, who's been very tough of late. Rogers has only given up one run in his last 14 appearances. And Kozlowski starts off the ninth inning with a solid base hit. That was really a good at bat by Kozlowski. Rogers tried to come inside with the fastball to get him off the plate to open up that outer edge. And lefties usually try to work away to left-handed hitters. Kozlowski got right back in there, stayed with the pitch, got it into the gap in left center field. So showing in that at bat right there that he can not only hang in against the lefties, but also handle the ball on the outer half of the plate. And you can be sure that Hal McRae took note of that. David Howard at the plate now has struck out twice and walked tonight. Scored a run after his walk in the fifth when the Royals scored four times on just three hits. Nolan Ryan's start tonight almost identical to his last start. But four and two thirds innings tonight gave up seven runs on seven hits. That's exactly what he did in his last start. Only he lasted a third of an inning longer. Plus five seconds for station identification. This is the Royals Television Network. This is WDAF TV, Kansas City. David Howard down on the count here. No balls, two strikes. Kozlowski at first, nobody out, top of the ninth. Royals lead seven to two. And in on the fist, and David able to just fight it foul. Due to the length of tonight's game, local news normally seen at this time will be seen immediately following the ball game. So stay tuned for local news next on most of these stations. Nice night in Arlington, Texas. Very pleasant, 82 degrees. Howard fouls it away. 
trying to notch their second win on this road trip against four losses. On the season, the Royals 22 and 42 away from home. The fewest road wins ever in club history, 30 in 1970 and again in 1990. Al McCray still hopeful that this ball club can come on strong. Slowly hit ground ball is short. Houston to second for one, and that's all they get. Now Newman upended by Kozlowski. No harm done. No way they're going to be able to double up David Howard. And no way they're going to be able to get back to 500, which is their goal for the season, unless they play better on the road. It's going to have to be more consistent. They've put together an all-around effort this evening, pitching and hitting, along with defense. And they really worked the bases hard against Nolan Ryan. They tried to take advantage of his slow delivery to the plate to advance on Yvonne Rodriguez, but run successful there, but they came up with the key base hits tonight. Switch hitting Greg Jeffries up there now, right-handed against the southpaw. Bouncer to third. Let's see what they get out of this. Newman's return throw. This time dug out by Palmero. They get the inning-ending double play, and we go to the bottom of the ninth with the Rangers needing five to get even. Boone's battled in tonight, and for his efforts, Budweiser will donate $1,000 to Bacchus, a program for students choosing healthy campus lifestyles. Bacchus, boost alcohol consciousness concerning the health of university students. New pitcher for the Royals now. Jeff Montgomery will get an inning in. Monty making his 53rd appearance of the year. His record one and six, an earned run average of 2.15. He's had 31 saves. This is not a save situation. 62 and two-thirds innings pitched for Montgomery this year. 42 hits, 22 walks, 48 strikeouts. Opponents have hit just 189 against him, and he'll start off against Rafael Palmero, who doubled and scored in the seventh. It was Palmero's first hit in 14 tries. You may recall Palmero last year had that very frustrating day at Royal Stadium, went 0 for 9 in an 18-inning game. Came back not long after that, though, and had five hits in one game against the Royals, so he got even. It was after the first pitch by Montgomery and lofts it to Conine and left. One out of the ninth. That'll bring up Dean Palmer, who's 0 for 2 with a walk today. Baseman, Dean Palmer. The Royals can hang on here would be their fourth victory over the Rangers this season in 10 tries. Down too low to Palmer. Mike Boddicker getting a little work in out of the Royals bullpen right now. A ball and a strike to Dean Palmer. Ippolito Pichardo would stand to be the winner. It would be his eighth victory of the year. He went seven innings, giving two runs on five hits, walked one, struck out two. He left a home run to Reimer. had split their last 20 games prior to tonight evenly. 10 wins, 10 losses. They are 19 and 19 since the All-Star break, but two outs away from going 20 and 19. Now one out away. Don't forget our next TV game tomorrow night at 6.30 Central Time on most of these Royals Network stations. The Detroit Tigers will provide the opposition tomorrow night. Here's Yvonne Rodriguez who drove in the second Ranger run back in the seventh inning with a single to left field. And that's a strike from Montgomery. He 
and the Royals are a strike away now. Go ahead and get it, Jeff. Let's get on to Detroit. Line drive, right field, foul. And a nice catch. Again, the 0-2 to Rodriguez, hitting about the same spot. This one a few rows deeper. So Jeff Montgomery will crank it up one more time, 0-2. Inside with a fastball. Montgomery has closed out a number of games this year with his changeup. See what he'll call upon against Rodriguez here. Breaking ball right back at Monty, and that's the ball game. A one, two, three, ninth, and the Royals win it seven to two. We'll be back.